Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use mission control in iNav to send your fixed wing on an automated waypoint mission. It's actually a fairly simple procedure, but there are a few settings and steps in the process that might catch you off guard, so I'll be talking about those as I go. I like to keep my videos short and to the point without any waffle, so hopefully we'll get through this nice and quickly. Okay, so I'm in the iNav configurator version 241 and I'm connected to my AR wing. And the first thing we're going to do is go to the mission control tab on the left and it will open up this map. So what you want to do is go and locate the field you're going to be flying from and where you want to set up your waypoint mission. Now the very basics of creating a waypoint mission is that you simply click the locations on the map where you would like your plane to fly. And as simple as that, I have already created a waypoint mission, a very basic one. Now, each one of these points has information attached to them, which is the speed and the altitude at which the plane is going to try and achieve while heading for the waypoint. So if you click on it, this information is displayed on the left. Now what you can do is you can click each of these points and you can edit these values by simply going in and changing them. Now the altitude is in centimeters, so this is the equivalent of 50 meters. So I could say I might want to set that to 60 meters. And then the speed is in a very useless centimeters per second. And I have mine set to 2400, which is around 86 kilometers per hour. Now, rather than going in and then editing each of these manually, there's a much better way of doing this. So I'm gonna remove all of these and start again. Now, if you click this little cog icon here, this allows you to set the default for all of your points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I want actually, I want to be flying at an altitude of 80 meters and I'm happy with the speed. So I'm going to save that. And there's two reasons why this is really useful is it means you don't have to go in editing each of the points manually. And the second one is, I believe the default value for your altitude is something silly like five or 10 meters. So obviously that is just not going to end well. So now when I click a few points here, you'll notice that all of these points will hold my default value. And then if you're on a mission and you know that at a certain point you want to fly lower, so I'm going to be 80 meters for this part of it, but if I go down here, I know that actually the elevation of the ground is a lot lower, so I want to fly lower. I can go back in here and change it halfway through a mission. I'm going to set this now to 40 meters and save it. And I'm going to click here, here, here. And then just show you these points are at altitude of 80 meters and then this one is at 40 meters now the way it will behave is once it reaches this one at 80 meters as soon as it starts heading for this one it will start dropping its altitude because during this part of the mission it will be trying to lower its altitude to 40 meters so something else you can do is once you've made a mission like this you can simply drag any of these points around to adjust your mission or you can click on an individual point and you can remove it so one little warning i want to give you about the altitude is that the altitude you set is above the launch position so i know for example when i'm flying here this section of trees is actually a lot higher elevation than where i'm stood so if i was to set my altitude at around 40 meters and fly across here I'd probably end up skimming the treetops and I don't want to cut it that close. So you do need to be careful and make sure you know the area uh, when you're setting the altitude for each of your mission waypoints. Okay, now that we've set up a basic mission, let's just talk about some of the information up here. Now firstly, we have this return to home at end of the mission. So I have selected this every time I've done waypoint missions so that once the plane reaches the last point, after that it will then go and return to home. I'm not too sure exactly what would happen if you don't select return to home. I've not tried this yet. I'll try this next time I'm in the field and I'll put the results in the video description below. Once you've selected return to home, you also can select landing. And if you really want to go and get your plane out of a tree, tick this box. Otherwise, I'd leave that blank. The next piece of information in here that's useful is you have the distance of your waypoint mission. So what it's saying is this circuit, as highlighted by the blue line, covers one and a half kilometers or just over. 
Obviously you need to take into account what you think the range of your aircraft is if you're going on a long mission, but also make sure you factor in the distance between where you start the waypoint and reaching the first waypoint. If I was to take off here and fly say for example above these trees and then activate waypoint, you would then fly from here to this first waypoint and it wouldn't take into account that distance there. Not so important in this case, but if that first waypoint is a large number of kilometers away, then obviously you'll need to take that into account when deciding if your plane is going to be able to manage to complete the mission without running out of battery. The next two pieces are the available points and whether the mission is valid. Now these two don't update until you save this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at saving the mission and we'll come back to those points in a second. So there's three ways you can save this. The first one is you can save this as a file. This is kind of useful if you want to maybe create a different waypoint mission at a later date and then you'd like to restore this one later because you can simply load this again. The first one you want to do really is you want to save this mission to your flight controller. So I'm going to click this and then you'll see that these fields become active. So what it's telling you here is the available points you have used seven of the 60. Now I believe this number here depends on the flight controller you're using. I'm using the Matek F405 and it seems that that one allows for 60 points. Now I've used seven and you might think, well actually one, two, three, four, five, six points are on the map there, but it actually counts return to home as one of the points. Then you have this mission valid. So don't worry if, there, if you don't see a tick throughout, it will never have a tick to say your mission is valid until you click save mission to FC. So don't worry about seeing cross there if you're in the process of making your mission uh, and it's saying that it's not valid. Now, the, one of the really important parts here is we've saved this to our flight controller and yes, it's saying it's valid, but if we turn the flight controller off and back on again, this will not have saved. So to ensure that this waypoint mission is saved on your flight controller and will still be there if you turn it off and back on again, you have to make sure you click save EEPROM mission. There will not be any feedback, but it will work. Okay, so one more thing you need to do before you go ahead and test out this waypoint mission in the field is you need to go into the modes tab and you need to make sure that you have set up your nav WP waypoints as one of the modes on a switch so you can activate that in the field. Before we go ahead and test this waypoint mission in the field, there are three pieces of CLI that I want to bring to your attention. So the first one is called nav WP safe distance. So if I bring that up. So what this is, is the first waypoint in the mission should be closer than this value, which is in centimeters and is default to 10,000, which is 100 meters. So basically what that means is with this setting on 10,000 as the default, you have to be within 100 meters of your first waypoint in order to activate it. To me, that seems quite a small distance. So what I've done is I've increased mine to 50,000, which means I can be 500 meters away from the first waypoint and it will still activate. So if you try to activate a waypoint mission and it's simply not starting, this could be one of the causes. So please check that out before you fly. The next piece of CLI I want to bring to your attention is the nav WP radius. Now this is the waypoint would be considered reach if the plane is within this radius. Now the default is 100 and I haven't changed it and this 100 is in centimeters, so that means one meter. So basically what that means is your plane has to go within a meter from the point that you've selected on the map to consider it reached. One meter does seem quite a small distance, so it's just something I thought I'd point out, not something I've had any issues with, but something you might need to keep an eye on. The final piece of CLI I want to bring to your attention is this one called Failsafe Mission. Now, if this is set to off, which mine is, the failsafe procedure won't be triggered and the mission will continue if your signal is lost. So what this means is if you have this set to on, when you're doing your waypoint mission, if you lose your RC link and your failsafe is set to return to home, it will then at that point go into return to home. With it set 
to off like I have mine, it's going to continue the waypoint mission even if it loses its control link. Okay, so at this point I think you're ready to go ahead and test your waypoint mission. So I'm going to show you an example flight of this waypoint mission that I carried out and also something that's very important to do when you're in the field before you take off. So the first time I flew and tried to do a waypoint mission, when I got in the air it would not activate and there is a very good reason for this. Before you fly you have to load your waypoint mission and to do this with the throttle stick in the bottom position you have to move the stick on the right into the top right hand corner and hold it there for a few seconds. This is done before you arm your model. Unfortunately it won't give you any feedback on the OSD to let you know that the waypoint mission was loaded successfully. The only way you can get this feedback is if you install a buzzer and it will beep to tell you. I do wish this was something that just automatically happened when you plug your LiPo in and I guarantee you now even though I've told you about this you will be kicking yourself because you'll take off, you'll go to activate your waypoint and you'll realise you've forgotten this step. Okay so the AR wing is in the air and you can see that waypoint mode is activated as it says en route to waypoint. It's just about to pass its first point and what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed this up because you don't want to sit here and watch the whole flight. For anyone that is interested in watching the entire flight in normal speed I will upload that as a separate video and I'll put a link in the video description. As you can see it's cruising around quite close to its target altitude of 50 meters. Now this waypoint here is set to 40 meters so once it passes this waypoint you should see it start to descend. You might notice that some of the turns after it reaches a waypoint are quite severe. However, in version 2.5 of iNav, they have addressed this with a new CLI, Nav FW Control Smoothness. Here you'll see I'm just approaching the last waypoint and then it's going to go into return to home. So it climbs up to the return to home altitude of 100 meters and is circling home. Something to note is that it doesn't actually say return to home on the OSD, it just acts as if it's still in a waypoint mission. So that concludes my video on how to use iNav Mission Control to send your fixed wing on an autonomous waypoint mission. I hope you found it useful, please consider giving it a like, and as always I will read and respond to all comments on my videos. Thanks for watching.